Greetings for Sunday, December 4th, 2022, 9.30 Mass. Good morning everyone and welcome to St. Delicious Parish on this second Sunday in Advent. A warm welcome to all of you joining us here and from your homes and to our celebrant this morning, Father Joe Sullivan who's back from the U.S. of A. Readings this morning may be found on page 84 of your Sunday Missal. I invite everyone to stand. Our opening number is 445. Awake! Awake! The night is near. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, a shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The 
spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. response to the psalm is, in his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. For he delivers the needy one who calls, the poor and the one who has no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. May his name endure forever, his fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in him, may they pronounce him happy. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound forever. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, so that by steadfastness, by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another, in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I will confess you among the Gentiles, and sing praises in your name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Terrible. 
I want to tell you my story. And then you're going to say, Father Sullivan, you're stupid. Listen to the story. The thing is, I got down to uh, Cape Cod, and uh, the next day, you know, uh, I spoke for my insulin. I didn't have it. And the last time we took a man about the insulin was the day before. I had my breakfast, had my insulin on my medication, and then I put the insulin back in the fridge. Not too great. So try and get okay, insulin down in the States if you're not in a hurry. Very difficult. So I had to go to a clinic where they gave me some tests and all that. I had to see a doctor. She kind of approved me. Then I had to go to a pharmacy to get my medication. But three little operations of that, $900. Okay. So that was that. And then on, th on Thanksgiving, okay, I was all set to join 35 members of my extended family. And of course, that morning, they called, my, my cousin called the ambulance. Because I was out of it completely. That's happened if you don't think you're interested. Anyway, I was brought to the hospital. Uh, they kept me there for a few hours. Everything was brought back to normal. The only thing I don't have from that experience is the bill. <laughs> you know, for, so the thing is, you know, being stupid, I put my insulin in the fridge, I paid the price. So if you're on insulin or taking any medication, don't forget to take it. Anyway, I'm upset. But yes, it was nice to be with family and friends, but I only saw maybe a tenth of it. Big family down in the city. So, Jesus was born again in Cuba in 1997. Or at least that is how many of the Cubans felt for the first time in 50 years since the Cuban people, because of the revolution, the first time that they celebrated Christmas as a public holiday. And Christians had managed to celebrate the birth of Christ in a quiet way every year. But for most people in Cuba, the Christmas gospel was something long forgotten or something entirely new. It must have seemed strange to find out about events which took place 2,000 years ago or more and to learn of their continued importance to hundreds of millions of Christians throughout the world. And people were discovering something new and at the same time, discovering something 2,000 years old. Cuba's first public Christmas in years was called to honor Pope John Paul II, Saint John Paul II, and was yet another sign of the religious revival that was taking place not only in Cuba, but in many countries throughout the world. <clears throat> Mercy is announced to us again and again. With joy we discover and rediscover what we have known all along, that God's mercy is faithful and sure. So today's gospel features John the Baptist, who appeared in the wilderness as though he had stepped straight out of the Old Testament. The past had come into the present, but John's message was not about the past. It was about the future, a radical change to each and every person to prepare for the coming of the Lord. And John was announcing anew what people had known all along. And John proclaimed the coming of Christ as people knew God and had heard of his salvation, but they had become blind to what was before their eyes. John did not give the people a new religion, but rather called them to greater faithfulness to their own traditions. And like all true prophets, John distinguished between the truth and all the cultural, cultural clutter that inevitably surrounds us. 
He had no patience, we're told, with what was not important, and pronounced urgently <coughs> on what really mattered. Prepare a way for the Lord by repenting from sin, to changing our attitudes and the way we live our day-to-day -day living. And what Isaiah foretold, John proclaimed again. What John foretold, Jesus announced this as well. And what Jesus announced, we proclaim anew. The gospel of Christ, always the same, but always new. And the easiest way to discover what John the Baptist represents is to imagine him preaching to us preaching to you and to me today. Prepare a way for the Lord. And we're getting very close to celebrating the feast of Christmas, Christ coming. And his message from the past, spoken to the present for the future. We have John the Baptist in today's gospel reading. It begins with, a, with the man himself, who he is, his personal qualities, how he lives. Then we have the strands of his message. He announces the same salvation of God as Isaiah announced. So he preaches continuity with the past. And John also predicts the coming of Christ, the Messiah, and is thus telling the people that here heard him that former times have come to an end. He condemns the prophecy and sin. But he offers freedom to those who are willing to repent. He is a powerful messenger of God, but regards himself merely as a sign, a pointer to Jesus. And he said that we will be judged by the fruit that we bear. Now think of this question all of us have to ask ourselves, Job included. You know, what do we have in our personality, in our day-to-day -day living, that should be the living? I can't, I don't want to speak for myself because I could go on and on and on. But the reality is we all have faults. And it all wants not that important. Showing love, showing a more lack of love, being unfair with children or with parents, there's a list that goes on and on. But we don't look at our faults, and yet we will point out the faults of everyone that we have something to do with. We are not prophets. We're not preachers as John the Baptist. But each of us may seek to do as the Baptist demands. He says that we have to repent. We can just rediscover the mercy of God. To sorrow for our sinful ways, and I think that's the word sinful. Why don't we just replace it? Our lack of love. Our lack of love shown in different ways might help us to understand that, yes, there are things we have to change. That's the message of today's gospel. And we have to take steps, okay, in our day to day living, to reflect who we are by what we do. And we rejoice that soon we will once again celebrate Christmas while never forgetting that He is always with us. And what we have always known, we come to know again. And we find ourselves at Christmas renewed by the Holy Spirit. So the experience of Christians in Cuba and in other parts of the world where public celebrations of Christmas are rare or entirely absent, can make this pause for a few moments and think. We can take our faith for granted, overlooking the fact that John the Baptist was announcing something powerful, something radical, something new. And when we realize what Jesus signifies as John realized, then it begins to challenge us to a new way of life. We will not rely on our religious inheritance. We will instead rely on a living faith. We will not presume that we are secure. 
but we will judge ourselves by the fruit we bear. But that's not why we stand for our creed. <coughs> response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, call to work together to prepare the Lord's way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to persecution and wars, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those caught up in turmoil and uncertainty, and for all who assist them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For God's people gathered here, called to walk the path of new life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those in our parish family, and among our loved ones who are ill, suffering, or in convalescence, especially Carol Dimon, Shirley McArdle, Clarice Mascarenas, John Henry, Bobby Squires, Maria Maloney, Trevor Bray, Jenny Wing. Matilda Diaz, Karin Lezuc, and Morty, Cynthia Paginado's five-year-old niece who had to be readmitted to the hospital. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we hear our prayer. We also pray in a special way for Marina Chansey and the deceased members of the Sullivan family for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We also pray in a special way for the continued healing of Pierre Scorsi, for whom this Mass is also being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our own personal <coughs> and private intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us ask Mother Mary to join us in our petitions. Hail Amen. Mary, full of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed are thou amongst women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. Gifts of Finest Wheat, 570.
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with and your spirit. Let us all each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
hopefully next December we'll be able to gather as a large group and wrap the present together as we did in the past. We will be dropping off the present on Saturday, December 17th. Once again, we will not be going room to room, but rather dropping off all 150 gifts at the reception. We thank you again, and it is through your donation that these whole projects are possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, one more thing. Just gotta get my picture here. Last week we raised uh, $542, so our total today is $4,073.40. So once again, thank you. Keep up, keep up these donations, we have bills to pay. Thank you. It's, it's much better when she comes and says all that, isn't she? Is it? Now, a meeting of parishioners will be held next Sunday, December the 11th. The meeting will take place immediately following on 9.30 a.m. Mass. At the church, Cynthia Hansen and Pierre Guimont have indicated that they will run for a second term. If anyone else wishes to run, they must be 18 years of age or older, and reside within the boundaries of the parish. They will need to be present at the meeting and have someone to propose their names and someone to second the proposal. Birthday greetings on the 5th. We have Chloe Lynn Russo who's celebrating. And on the 6th, Father Rodney Gagnon who surely remember, uh, was saying Mass for us quite often in the past. Celebrating an anniversary, and we are on the 7th, Bishop Thomas Dodd's 21st anniversary of his priestly ordination. Now, there might be other people whose birthday it is, who are listening online or who are here. So we should wish them a happy birthday and sing. Happy birthday to Jesus. 